The web is a messy place. Whether you're wired in or sending data over a wireless connection, odds are there are quite a few hops that your data will need to take on the way to its final destination, which for you means that there are a lot of things that could go wrong, resulting in your data being lost in transmission. Whenever we're developing applications that depend on the ability to send or receive data over a network, we need to keep this inherent unreliability in mind. Retry policies are a common way to help mitigate these risks. A retry policy is a set of rules that define when and how your application should retry an operation. Not every operation should be retried. For example, if you're not authorized to access the resource you're trying to use, if the data you're sending isn't valid, or if the resource you're trying to reach just doesn't exist, no amount of retries will resolve these issues. In fact, by retrying in these scenarios, you'll actually be slowing down your application unnecessarily. This is why when you retry is so important. You should only retry transient failures. That is, failures that are intermittent in nature, such as dropped connections or an error in a network appliance that was supposed to route your request. The other important aspect of a retry policy is how you retry. The simplest option might be to just implement logic to detect transient failures, then have your application keep retrying the operation if it encounters one. This might work in some cases, but what if the failure isn't transient? What if the resource you're trying to access is down? In this case, your retry policy would be stuck in an infinite loop, sending requests to a server that's not available to listen to them. This is why retry policies should have limits on how much they will retry some way of giving up if it doesn't look like the operation will ever succeed. This could be a maximum number of retries to limit the amount of times the operation will be attempted, or a timeout that will cause your application to simply give up on the operation after a specific amount of time has elapsed. Often, retry policies will include both of these limits. So let's go back to our simple retry policy example. Now let's imagine we've put a limit on how many times we'll retry this operation, say five. Again, this policy will work some of the time, but all transient failures aren't created equal. Some might take longer than others to go away. So if we simply executed all of our retries immediately, we might give up on the operation after half a second, when if we'd simply waited a full second, the operation would have succeeded. Or what if the cause of the failure is that the server we're communicating with is being bogged down by heavy load? If we send another five requests immediately, will likely make the problem worse. This is why retry policies should include a delay, a period of time that your application will wait in between retries. This helps make sure that one, we're giving enough time for the transient failure to resolve itself, and two, we're not overwhelming the server that we're trying to talk to. One of the most common types of retry policies is the exponential back off retry policy. This kind of policy starts out with a very small delay, but with each failed retry attempt, the delay grows exponentially. For example, after the first failed operation, we might wait 100 milliseconds before trying again. If that attempt fails, we might wait 200 milliseconds before trying another time, then 400 milliseconds, then 800, and so on, until either the operation succeeds or our retry policy has exhausted all of its allotted attempts. This exponential back-off approach ensures that we recover very quickly from very brief failures, while still allowing a longer period of time for those failures that might take a bit longer to go away. So, next time you find yourself sending and receiving data over a network connection, consider adding a retry policy to help protect your application against all the things that could go wrong on the web.